The Brothers Grimm Fairy Tales Story 4 A Tale About the Boy Who Went Forth to Learn What Fear Was A father had two sons. The older was smart and sensible, and could cope in any situation, while the younger was stupid and could neither learn nor understand anything. Whenever people encountered him, they said, He'll always be a burden to his father. If there were things to be done, the older son was always the one who had to take care of them. Yet, if the father asked the older son to fetch something toward evening or during the night, and if that meant he would have to pass through the churchyard or some other scary place, he would answer, Oh no, father, I won't go there. It gives me the creeps. Indeed, he was afraid. Sometimes stories that would send shivers up your spine were told by their fireside at night, and the listeners would say, Oh, it gives me the creeps. Often the younger son would be sitting in the corner and listening, but he never understood what they meant. They're always saying, It gives me the creeps, it gives me the creeps. But it doesn't give me the creeps. It's probably some kind of a trick that I don't understand. One day, his father happened to say to him, Listen, you over there in the corner, you're getting too big and strong. It's time you learned how to earn your living. Look how hard your brother works, while you're just a hopeless case. Oh, no, father, he responded. I'd gladly learn something. If possible, I'd like to learn how to get the creeps. That's something I know nothing about. When the older son heard that, he laughed and thought to himself, Dear Lord, my brother's really a dumbbell. He'll never amount to anything. You've got to start young to get anywhere. The father sighed and answered, You're sure to learn all about getting the creeps in due time, but it won't help you earn a living. Shortly after this, the sexton came to the house for a visit, and the father complained about his younger son that he was incapable of doing anything, much less learning and knowing anything. Just think, when I asked him what he wanted to do to earn a living, he actually said he wanted to learn how to get the creeps. If that's all he wants, the sexton replied, he can learn it at my place. Just hand him over to me and I'll smooth over his rough edges. The father was pleased to do this because he thought, the boy needs some shaping up. So the sexton took him to his house, where the boy was assigned the task of ringing the church bell. After a few days had passed, the sexton woke him at midnight and told him to get up, climb the church steeple and ring the bell. Now, you'll learn what the creeps are, the sexton thought, and secretly went up ahead of him. When the boy reached the top and turned round to grab hold of the bell rope, he saw a white figure standing on the stairs, across from the sound hole. Who's there? he cried out, but the figure did not answer, nor did it move an inch. Answer me, the boy shouted, or get out of here. You've no business being here at night. However, the sexton did not move, for he wanted to make the boy think he was a ghost. The boy shouted a second time, What do you want? If you're an honest man, say something, or I'll throw you down the stairs. He really can't be as mean as that, the sexton thought, and he kept still, standing there as if he were made of stone. The boy shouted at him a third time, and when that did not help, he lunged at the ghost and pushed him down the stairs. The ghost fell ten steps and lay in a corner. The boy then rang the bell, went home, got into bed without saying a word, and fell asleep. The sexton's wife waited for her husband for a long time, but he failed to return. Finally, she became anxious, woke the boy, and asked, Do you know where my husband is? He climbed the steeple ahead of you. No, replied the boy, but someone was standing across from the sound hole. When he refused to answer me or go away, I thought he was some sort of scoundrel and pushed him down the stairs. Why don't you go and see if it wasn't him? I'd feel sorry if it was. The wife ran off and found her husband, who was lying in a corner and moaning because of a broken leg. She carried him down the stairs, and then rushed off to the boy's father, screaming as she went. Your boy has caused a terrible accident, she cried out. He threw my husband down the stairs, and made him break a leg. Get that good-for-nothing out of our house. The father was mortified, and ran straight to the sexton's house, where he began scolding the boy. What kind of godless tricks have you been playing? The devil must have put you up to it. Father, he replied, just listen to me, I'm completely innocent. He was standing there in the dark, like someone who had evil designs. I didn't know who he was and warned him three times to say something or go away. Ah, said the father, you'll never be anything but trouble for me. Get out of my sight. I don't want to see you anymore. All right, father, gladly. Just give me until daylight and I'll go away and learn how to get the creeps. Then I'll show you a trick or two 
and be able to earn a living. Learn what you want, the father said. It's all the same to me. Here's fifty dollars. Take them and go out into the wide world, but don't tell anyone where you came from, or who your father is, because I'm ashamed of you. Yes, father, as you wish. If that's all you desire, I can easily bear that in mind. At daybreak, the boy put the fifty dollars, fifty tailors, in his pocket, went out on the large highway, and kept saying to himself, If I could only get the creeps. If I could only get the creeps. As the boy was talking to himself, a man came along and overheard him. When they had gone some distance together, they caught sight of the gallows, and the man said to him, You see the tree over there? That's where seven men were wedded to the rope maker's daughter. Now they're learning how to fly. Sit down beneath the tree, and wait till night comes, then you'll certainly learn how to get the creeps. If that's all it takes, the boy responded, I can do it with ease. And if I learn how to get the creeps as quickly as that, you'll have my fifty dollars. Just come back here tomorrow morning. The boy went to the gallows, sat down beneath it, and waited until evening came. Since he was cold, he made a fire. Nevertheless, at midnight the wind became colder, and he could not get warm in spite of the fire. When the wind knocked the hanged men against each other, and they swung back and forth, he thought, If you're freezing down here by the fire, they must really be cold and shivering up there. Since he felt sorry for them, he took a ladder, climbed up, untied one hanged man after the other, and hauled all seven down to the ground. Then he stirred the fire, blew on it, and set them all around it so they might warm themselves. However, they sat there without moving, and their clothes caught fire. Be careful, he said, otherwise I'll hang you back up there. The dead men did not hear. Indeed, they just remained silent and let their rags continue to burn. Then the boy became angry and said, If you won't take care, I can't help you, and I surely won't let you burn me. So he hung them up again, all in a row, sat down by his fire, and fell asleep. Next morning, the man came and wanted his fifty dollars. Well, he said, now you know what the creeps are. No, answered the boy. How should I know? Those men up there didn't open their mouths. They're so stupid they let the few old rags they were wearing get burned. The man realized he would never get the fifty dollars that day. So he went off saying, Never in my life have I met anyone like that. The boy also went his way, and once again he began talking to himself. Oh, if I could only get the creeps. If I could only get the creeps. A carter, who was walking behind him, overheard him and asked, Who are you? I don't know, answered the boy. Where do you come from? The carter continued questioning him. I don't know. Who's your father? I'm not allowed to tell. What's that you're always mumbling to yourself? Oh, the boy responded, I want to get the creeps, but nobody can teach me how. Stop your foolish talk, said the carter. Come along with me, and I'll see if I can find a place for you to stay. The boy went with the carter, and in the evening they reached an inn where they intended to spend the night. As they entered the main room, the boy spoke loudly once more. If I could only get the creeps. If I could only get the creeps. The innkeeper heard this and laughed. If that's what you desire, he remarked, there'll be ample opportunity for you to get it here. Oh, be quiet, the innkeeper's wife said. There have already been enough foolish fellows who've lost their lives. It would be a mighty shame if that boy with such pretty eyes never saw the light of day again. But the boy said, It doesn't matter how hard it may be. I want to get the creeps. That's why I left home. He kept bothering the innkeeper until the man told him about the haunted castle nearby, where one could really learn how to get the creeps. All he had to do was to spend three nights in it. The king had promised his daughter to anyone who would undertake the venture, and she was the most beautiful maiden under the sun. There were also great treasures in the castle guarded by evil spirits. Once the treasures were set free, they would be enough to make a poor man rich. Many men had already gone into the castle, but none had ever come out again. The next morning, the boy appeared before the king and said, If I may have your permission, I'd like to spend three nights in the haunted castle. The king looked at him and found the boy to his liking, so he said, You may request three things to take with you into the castle, but they must be lifeless objects. Well then, he answered, I'd like to have a fire, a lathe, and a carpenter's bench with a knife. The king had these things carried into the castle for him during the day. Just before nightfall, the boy himself went up to the castle, made a bright fire in one of the rooms, set up the carpenter's bench with the knife next to it, and sat down on the lathe. Oh, if I could only get the creeps, he said. 
but I don't think I'll learn it here, either. Toward midnight, he wanted to stir the fire again, but just as he was blowing it, he suddenly heard a scream coming from a corner. Meow. Meow, we're freezing. You fools, he cried out. What are you screaming for? If you're freezing, come sit down by the fire and warm yourselves. No sooner had he said that, than two big black cats came over with a tremendous leap, sat down beside him, and glared ferociously at him with their fiery eyes. After a while, when they had warmed themselves, they said, Comrade, let's play a round of cards. Why not, he responded, but first show me your paws. They stretched out their claws. My goodness, he said, what long nails you have. Wait, I've got to give them a good clipping. Upon saying that, he grabbed them by the scruffs of their necks, lifted them onto the carpenter's bench, and fastened their paws in a vice. I was keeping a sharp eye on you two, he said, and now I've lost my desire to play cards. Then he beat them to death and threw them into the water. But after he had put an end to those two and was about to sit down at his fire again, black cats and black dogs on glowing chains came out of all the nooks and crannies, and they kept coming and coming, so it was impossible for him to flee. They made a gruesome noise, stampede on his fire, tore it apart, and tried to put it out. He watched them calmly for a while, but when it became so awful that he could no longer stand it, he grabbed his knife and yelled, Get out of here, you lousy creatures! And he started swinging the knife. Some of them ran away, while he killed the rest and threw them into the pond. When he returned to his place, he built up his fire again by blowing on the sparks, and proceeded to warm himself. As he was sitting there, his eyelids grew heavy, and he felt a strong desire to sleep. Then he looked around, and saw a large bed in the corner. That's just what I was looking for, he said, and lay down on it. But just as he was about to shut his eyes, the bed began to move by itself, and raced all around the castle. Keep it up, he said, but go a little faster. The bed sped on, as though it were being drawn by six horses. It rolled through doorways and up and down stairs. Then, all of a sudden, bang, it turned upside down and lay on top of him, like a mountain. But he flung the blankets and pillows in the air, climbed out, and said, Now, anyone else who wants a ride can have one. He lay down by the fire and slept until it was day. In the morning, the king came, and when he saw the boy lying on the ground, he thought he was dead and that the ghosts had killed him. What a pity. He was such a handsome fellow, the king said. Upon hearing this, the boy sat up and said, It's not over yet. The king was astonished, but also glad, and asked him how things had gone. Very well, he answered. One night's over and done with. The other two will pass also. Then he went to the innkeeper, who gaped at him in amazement. I never expected to see you alive again, he said. Have you learned now what the creeps are? No, he said. It's no use. If only someone could tell me. The second night he went up to the old castle, sat down at the fire and repeated his old refrain, If I could only get the creeps. Toward midnight, he heard a lot of noise and rumbling, first softly, then louder and louder. Soon it became quiet for a while, until suddenly, with a loud cry, half a man came tumbling down the chimney and fell right at his feet. Hey there, cried the boy. There's a half missing. This isn't enough. Once again the noise began. There was a roaring and howling, and the other half came tumbling down. Wait, the boy said. I'll just give the fire a little stir for you. After he had done that, he looked around and saw that the two pieces had joined together to form a gruesome-looking man, who was now sitting in his place. That wasn't part of the bargain, said the boy. The bench is mine. The man tried to push him away, but the boy did not let him. Instead, he gave the man a mighty shove and sat back down in his place. Suddenly, more men came tumbling down the chimney, one after the other, and they brought nine dead men's bones and two dead men's skulls, set them up, and began to play a game of nine pins. The boy felt a desire to play as well and asked, Hey, can I play too? Yes, if you have money. Money enough, he answered, but your balls aren't round. He took the skulls, put them in the lathe, and turned them until they were round. Now they'll roll much better, he said. Hooray! Let's have some fun. He joined their game and lost some of his money, but when the clock struck twelve, everything disappeared before his eyes, and he lay down and fell asleep in peace. The next morning, the king came to inquire about him, and he asked, How did things go for you this time? I played a game of nine pins, he said, and I lost a few hellers. 
Didn't you get the creeps? Not at all, he responded. I had a lot of fun. If I only knew what the creeps were. The third night, he sat down on his bench again and said quite sadly, If I could only get the creeps. When it grew late, six huge men came in carrying a coffin. Then he said, Aha, that must be my cousin who died just a few days ago. He signaled to them with his finger and cried out, Come here, little cousin, come here. They set the coffin on the ground, and he went over and lifted the lid. There was a dead man lying inside, and the boy felt his face, which was as cold as ice. Wait, he said, I'll warm you up a bit. He went to the fire, warmed his hand, and placed it on the dead man's face, but it remained cold. So he took the dead man out and set him near the fire, then put him on his lap and rubbed his arms until his blood began circulating again. When that did not work either, the boy recalled that two people can warm each other up when they lie in bed together, so he brought the man to bed, covered him, and lay down beside him. After a while, the dead man got warm and began to move. You see, cousin, said the boy, what if I hadn't warmed you? But the dead man shouted, Now I'm going to strangle you! What? the boy responded. Is that my thanks? I'm going to put you right back into your coffin. He lifted him up, tossed him inside, and shut the lid. Then the six men returned and carried the coffin away. I can't get the creeps, the boy said. I'll never learn it here, no matter how long I live. Just then, a ghastly-looking man entered. He was old and larger than the others, and had a long white beard. Oh, you scoundrel, the man cried out. Now you'll learn what the creeps are, for you're about to die. Not so fast, said the boy. If I'm about to die, you'll have to get me first. Don't worry, I'll get you, said the monster. Easy does it. Don't talk so big. I'm just as strong as you are, if not stronger. We'll see about that, said the old man. If you're stronger than I am, I'll let you go. Come, let's give it a try. He led the boy through the dark passages to a smithy, picked up an axe, and drove an anvil right into the ground with one blow. I can do better than that, said the boy, and he went to the other anvil. The old man, with his white beard hanging down, drew near him to watch. The boy grabbed the axe, split the anvil in two with one blow, and wedged the old man's beard in the middle. Now I've got you, the boy said. It's your turn to die. He seized an iron and beat the old man until he whimpered and begged the boy to stop, and promised to give him great treasures. The boy pulled out the axe and let him go. The old man led him back into the castle and showed him three chests full of gold in a cellar. One of them, he said, belongs to the poor, the second to the king, and the third is yours. Just then the clock struck twelve, and the ghost vanished, leaving the boy standing in the dark. I'll find my way out of here all the same, he said and groped about until he found the way back to his room, where he fell asleep by the fire. In the morning, the king came and said, Now you must have learned what the creeps are. No, he answered. What are they? My dead cousin was here, and a bearded man came. He showed me a great deal of money down in the cellar, but nobody told me what the creeps are. Then the king said, You've saved the castle, and shall marry my daughter. That's all fine and good, he answered but I still don't know what the creeps are. Now the gold was brought up from the cellar, and the wedding was celebrated. The boy loved his wife dearly, and he was very happy, but he still kept saying, if I could only get the creeps, if I could only get the creeps. After a while, his wife became annoyed by that, but her chambermaid said, don't worry, I'll make sure he gets to know what the creeps are. She went out to a brook that ran through the garden and fetched a bucket full of minnows. That night, while the young king was sleeping, his wife pulled the covers off him and poured the bucket full of cold water and minnows on him. Then the little fish began flapping all over him, causing him to wake up and exclaim, Oh, I've got the creeps! I've got the creeps! Now I know, dear wife, just what the creeps are.